If you enjoy listening to horror stories before going to sleep, I kindly invite you to subscribe to the Scary Cat channel. Imagine. You're in the middle of nowhere, approaching a solitary woman by a well, only to discover she's not even human. Let me set the scene for you. My Uncle Jack, may he rest in peace, was a real character. He was a blue collar type of guy, worked in construction all his life. Mind you, he didn't die from anything supernatural. He fell off a building on the second floor. Tragic accident. But this ain't about his death, it's about a spooky tale he used to tell. Uncle Jack wasn't rich, not by a long shot. He was a simple man, living a simple life. His brothers and sisters, they all got out of the sticks, made something of themselves. But Jack, well, he was cut from a different cloth. He was always the fearless one, even as a kid. Living out in the boonies, he had to navigate all sorts of desolate places just to get to work. And the stories he'd bring back, man, they'd give you chills. This one though, it's never left me. Uncle Jack lived in this little town near an Navajo reservation. Already sounds like a setup for a horror flick, right? Whenever I'd visit him or grandma, who lived in the same town, I wouldn't dare step outside after dark. Too many creepy stories echoing in my mind. One night, Uncle Jack was heading home from work, clear across town. The route home took him through the heart of the Cheska Mountains, part of the Navajo Nation, straddling Arizona and New Mexico. Those high peaks cast long, eerie shadows, especially as the sun sinks down. The twilight in the mountains is something else. No city noise. No lights. Just the wind howling through the rocks and trees, and the occasional rustle of unseen critters. All you hear is your footsteps crunching on the gravel, and your heart pounding in your chest. One such night, Uncle Jack was parched. He knew there was a well nearby, one he'd often drink from. It was around sunset when he got there. He spotted a woman sitting by the well, her back towards him. She was dicked out in old-fashioned garb, similar to what Grandma used to wear. Her hair, long and flowing, almost reached the ground. She was busy brushing it, keeping it in check by holding it between her toes. Uncle Jack felt a shiver of unease. But he shrugged it off, figuring she must be a local. He was thirsty, and he needed to get to the well. As he approached, he tried to get her attention, calling out, Ma'am, you okay there? But she didn't respond. She just kept brushing her hair, as if he wasn't there. Despite his growing fear, Uncle Jack pressed on, thinking maybe she was hard of hearing. As he got closer, he called out again, still no response. Finally, he reached out to touch her shoulder, trying to get her attention. He wished he hadn't. As she turned to face him, Uncle Jack couldn't recall much of her face, but those red, glowing eyes, they were burned into his memory. She looked him dead in the eyes, and Uncle Jack was rooted to the spot with fear. He snapped out of it, and, filled with terror, started running towards home, screaming his lungs out. He didn't dare look back, and in his panic, he tripped and broke a few toes on the rocky path. But that didn't stop him. He ran for nearly an hour, feeling like his heart would give out at any moment. Finally, he made it home, breathless and shaking. He relayed his story to his wife and my grandmother, who were convinced the woman by the well was a skinwalker 